test, 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 test. Good morning, and welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're joining us in worship today, and we also welcome those joining us online as well. We are thankful that you've allowed us a little uh, break, and uh, the good part of that, too, is that uh, you get to hear other people, and I've heard some very good comments about Kendra leaving, leading worship, and then Jeff Backer last week leading worship as well. So it's good for you to uh, have that experience too. And quite honestly, that is the part that 
I needed in a vacation too. I needed to be sitting in a pew, and that's something that a pastor uh, longs for. Uh, uh, you need to be preached to as well. And we had that opportunity. Uh, two weeks ago, we uh, visited much, a church much like this. It's out in the country, little Norway Lutheran. Um, the pastor there was Pastor Leroy Eisminger's granddaughter, who also went to school with me. And so it doesn't matter. It, it's what's so nice when you go visit another church, you can know what to expect. Um, uh, because the confession and forgiveness matters. The Apostles' Creed matters. You're praying the Lord's Prayer matters. And that sermon makes a difference. And uh, it was so good to, to hear that. Uh, the following week, we visited a much larger church in the city of Custer. And they just have a wonderful view of the mountains behind as you're facing the sanctuary there's just full of windows and you get to see the the god's creation in all its glory behind there and uh, so it's fun to worship there as well and then uh last this last wednesday um we visited the chapel in the hills stav church which has a little specialness to me because the one pastor harry r gregerson who uh, it was one of his dreams to uh bring that church to rapid city was served at Willow Creek when I was growing up and was the one that baptized me and he's long since passed, but the church is still there. And uh, uh, while we visited it several other times, this time we actually worshiped there and uh, those churches were built, you know, Luther's time was like 500 years ago. These churches were 500 years before Luther and uh, the unique features in it is that there's four pillars that hold up the church which represent the each of the Gospels, and it's on that that the church is founded. Um, so, and then sat there with a fairly full, small church, but fairly full, and everybody singing beautiful Savior in harmony, and it was just ringing beautifully in there. So, anyway, we are uh, glad we had that time away and excited to be back as well. So, and there are things happening already. School has started and Sunday school beginning. So we do have a few announcements before our worship here begins today. Tomorrow I hope you enjoy a little time off as Labor Day. And then it uh, looks like you're quilting on Wednesday and Thursday. Then it is time for Sunday school. Nick, I understand you had a meeting last week. Nicole, do you have any announcements that you'd like to... Uh, highlight today about that meeting or what's coming up? Yeah, I mean, that'd be great if you could do that for us. And I can hear what the plans are too. So Sunday school will start on September 17. That will be our rally Sunday. We are planning a football theme. So um, the, the theme is uh, Sundays are for Jesus and football. So uh, we are uh, putting together a, an inflatable with a, with a football theme. We've got a football pass going on. We're going to be bringing in some, some fun other activities with that as well. We will be providing a lunch as well uh, after the service on the 17th. Um, some hot dogs and, and chips and, and just a good little picnic. And then, uh, so that's our kickoff. And then we'll go on from there. Uh, so let's plan for the 17th. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Glad to hear that. Thank you for making that announcement. Birthdays this week, Jaylee Jervig, Braden Turner, Elizabeth Stuhl, Doug Nahava, Jody Westerber, and Tom Wilson. And happy anniversary to Nick and Christy Langland, Jennifer and Jesse Hartman, Wendy and Steve Hartman as well. I believe those are our announcements for today. Are there any from you? If not, I invite you to stand as you are able as our worship begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And we begin the service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Son of God, Eternal Savior. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The Lord be with you. And we pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose a path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow his commands. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. There he is. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. First lesson today is Jeremiah 15, 15 through 21. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. If your forbearance do not take me away, know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter, utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we'll read responsively Psalm 26, 1 through 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love you, house you dwell in, and the place where your glory abides. Second lesson today is Romans 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice to those who rejoice, weep, and those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Be associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it, <clears throat> it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, 
But leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we sing Jesus Loves Me as the as ranger comes forward for the children's message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. How's it going, Ranger? Good. School started? Yeah. Like it? Yeah. Good. A little hesitant, but it, it was good. So I'm going to have you help by starting to complete these sentences for me, but then we'll probably ask these people to help too. So like if you are sitting at the supper table and your mom and ask, dad asked to pass something, he said, Ranger, would you pass the salt and... What else do they want you to pass maybe? Salt and... There you go, exactly. And this is kind of a favorite sandwich of mine. I don't eat it that often, but it's one made with peanut butter and jelly. There you go. Yep, that's what that is. Um, there's that story that, about that wolf that tries to blow down the houses, and he does so by huffs. He huffs, and huffs. there you go. You are so good. Um, if you fall down and get a bruise, they might say it's black and... Purple or blue, yep, yeah. that's, that's a good one. That certainly works. When you clean your room, it's probably so clean we say it's spick and... See, they say your room is just as clean as it needs to be. Very good. Um, life, we can say, is just a series of ups and... Yep, it certainly is. When you get, to, Ranger, when you get to be my age, I get up in the morning, I got some aches and, Pain. yep, <laughs> that starts to happen if you're kind of an accountant-minded person and you want to make sure your books are right, you do a system of checks and, very good, um, let's see, also when you get retired, sometimes you want some freedom so, you, so that you can come and go as you please. Well, those are a lot of them, I think. And all of these things are connected with what word? And, okay. We're going to read a lesson, and I want you to listen for how many times Jesus uses this word and. And when Jesus uses the word and, all these things happen. Um, sometimes we want to separate what's put together with and, like, a big thing that churches do, we say, believe and be baptized. It sounds like they're separate things. No, they are together. They happen together. Baptism happens. Their faith happens. This is not a two-step deal. It isn't one or the other. It isn't this, and then that happens, and is in the middle. And when Christ says something, it'll happen. And we're going to hear a story about that today, okay? Going to listen for that word and when I read it? Good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We ask that rain still continue to happen and the hot temperatures that are coming uh, will uh, not hurt anybody or livestock and uh, hopefully the temperatures will cool down so that harvest will con continue to happen. But we ask that your word would come to us today and fill our hearts with your love and your peace and all these things we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up, Ranger. And I invite the rest of you to stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Oh. Uh -huh. 
of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Holy Gospel for today comes from Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on defined things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. For truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior. Amen. If you remember your grammar, the word and, I believe, is called a conjunction, which is a word which connects two parts of a sentence. And they can be nouns, they can be verbs, they can be adjectives, but they're usually of equal value, so they connect them. I would have to admit that I'm not the best at remembering everything that I hear, especially if there are things given in a long list of things for me to do. If what I heard is easy to do, it's much more likely it's going to happen, but if it's something in this long list of things and it's connected with the word and, and it isn't what I want to hear, it's less likely it will happen. However, when a member of the Trinity uses the word and, whether it's God the Father, God the Son, or the Holy Spirit himself, you can depend that whatever is spoken before and after the and will take place. The and is not placed there for us to choose which part we like, and then maybe forget the other words that Jesus said that troubles us. No, when Jesus says, and, you should pay attention to everything, he says, because it's going to happen, whether you like it or not. I couldn't help but notice how often Jesus uses the word and in today's reading. <coughs> you can look at those, I think I probably found all of them that I highlighted in yellow today. Some of the things Jesus says we don't mind hearing. But some things that Jesus says we prefer to tune out from our hearing, or we don't even want to believe they will happen. And this was certainly true for Peter, too, when, God, when Peter said, God forbid it, Lord. In the Gospel reading for today, it says, from this time on. So Jesus uh, begins by drawing a line between what his ministry had been before and what it soon would become. It is as if Jesus is putting a bookmark in the pages of Scripture, between when Peter rightly identified Jesus as the Messiah, which Pastor Jeff preached to you about last week, and now what Jesus said, he must go through to become our Savior. And then Jesus teaches us what we can expect will happen to us as true followers of Jesus. Peter might have heard that it was on his confession, what he said that Jesus would build his church. But Peter failed to hear Jesus tell him that flesh and blood did not give Peter this confession. 
It wasn't come from human origin. He said it came from the Father in heaven. The words that came out of Peter's mouth were none other than God's words from himself. It was not on Peter that the church would be built, but on the keys of the kingdom of heaven that would be the forgiveness of sins, which is the solid foundation of the church yet today. Yes, Peter was right when he identified Jesus as the Messiah. He gave the right answer, but Peter had no idea what Jesus must go through to be his Savior and your Savior. When Jesus gave his list of things he must go through, he said, first he must go to Jerusalem. Well, so good so far. Jerusalem was the place that people went up to worship. This we would go along with, but what Jesus had to say does not stop there. Jesus said, And I will undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. The disciples who had just heard that Jesus would be their savior were now hearing that the power that they thought he would have and he would use was going to be stripped away from him. Jesus wasn't going to use his power on the elders, chief priests, and scribes. Instead, he was going to be led like a sheep to slaughter. This would be enough for most people to quit listening. I would have to admit, when I watched The Passion of the Christ, I have to leave the room when Jesus goes through the great suffering that he predicted that would happen. I too, like Peter, want to forbid that. But Jesus still is not done. Jesus then says, and be killed. Whatever ears that were still listening are now likely close to whatever Jesus might say next. What good is a Messiah who is not only weak, but now is also dead? Jesus, however, says more. But I doubt if Peter or any of his disciples heard him say, and on the third day, be raised. As I just said, Jesus doesn't give Peter credit for calling him the, the Messiah. Jesus says that saying such a statement can only come from the work of the Holy Spirit, from the Heavenly Father. Peter didn't find that confession within himself, but it was given to him through the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we confess our faith comes from as well. In the same way, Jesus doesn't directly condemn Peter for rebuking this plan of salvation when he says, God forbid it, Lord, this way of suffering and death before resurrection. Because Jesus does not say, get behind me, Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. Jesus knew that just as quickly as the Holy Spirit leaves a moment for Satan to speak, Satan will begin to undo in Peter what Jesus said must take place. Jesus knew this voice. Jesus had heard this voice before. It was the same voice that spoke to Jesus in the wilderness immediately after he was baptized. Satan spoke to Jesus immediately after the Holy Spirit had spoken to him and claimed him as his beloved son. What Satan had to say wasn't a bad thing. What he had to say sounded good and encouraging. Satan wanted Jesus to remove his hunger by using his power to, break, to make bread out of stones. Satan wanted Jesus to, remo to uh, give Satan was going, willing to give Jesus whatever he wanted if he would simply bow down and worship him. Jesus knew that it wasn't Peter who was doing the speaking, but it was Satan himself. But he would be using Peter and speaking through him to become a stumbling block to the course Jesus said that he must take to become the savior of the world. It's worth noting that Peter was called a stumbling block. He was not called a roadblock. When there's a roadblock, you can't get through it. You have to take a different route. As many of you remember, when the bridge west of Waldeck was getting rebuilt, it was not just a stumbling block. It was a complete roadblock. 
You had to find a different way. So it's understandable that Peter would not understand or like Jesus saying that he would suffer and die, and it would, uh, and he would speak against Jesus by having to go through such pain. But it was really Satan who was against Jesus dying and rising again, because he knew that because of the de his death and resurrection, the sting of death would be taken away for all followers of Jesus from that day on. And Satan did not want that to happen. However, neither Peter or Satan could say anything to change the course of the direction that Jesus said he must go. Peter and Satan were minor and very short-term stumbling blocks. Jesus' rebuke to Peter and Satan quickly put Jesus back on the road to Jerusalem where he would suffer greatly by everyone and be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus, after Jesus describes that his glory would not come from an exercise of his power, but through the suffering on the cross, Jesus tells what it means to become fo his follower. Following Jesus, contrary to what is believed by many today, does not come from your obedience to Jesus. Salvation is not about the good you do outnumbering the bad that you do. If this was true, then salvation would be up to you. And, well, good luck for that happening. Jesus instead says, deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. Another and. Jesus doesn't promise his followers to take control of their salvation and in doing so are going to be promised days of happiness and prosperity. Jesus is promising that you too, as a follower of Jesus, are going to have crosses to bear. But he does not leave that up to you. Whatever cross you may bear in this life is only a stumbling block to the promises that Jesus has given to you that can never be taken away from you. If you've ever sat in a Lutheran church very long, you have likely heard the phrase, saint and sinner. Not saint or sinner, or even sinner and then saint. Martin Luther may have coined the phrase that we are saint and forgiven sinner, both at the same time, simultaneously, but it is from these examples from Scripture that we learn from stories of Peter how at one moment Peter is confessing Jesus as Lord and named a rock, and in the very next breath, Peter is rebuking Jesus and called a stumbling block. But we also know that this is not the last story about Peter in Scripture. Peter is not obedient to Jesus in this story. But Jesus does not replace Peter with a better disciple who is a better follower of Jesus. Instead, Jesus remembers Peter, the one whom he has chosen to be his disciple, and he will use the keys of the kingdom, which is now obviously not in the person of Peter, but it is through the forgiveness of sins. Yes, after the third day, when Jesus was raised from the dead, Jesus goes looking for Peter, who not only rebuked him on this day, but also would come to deny him three times as Jesus was dying on the cross. And Jesus would find him and would forgive him and make a great preacher out of him. Well, you and I have not gone up to Jerusalem today to worship, but you have been led by the Holy Spirit to this place to worship. To hear that like Peter, there is nothing that you can do that can prevent you from receiving the love Jesus has coming to you. Jesus told his disciples that the Son of Man is to come with the angels in the glory of his Father. Then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Not we will repay for what has been done, but he will repay for everyone, for you and me, for what he has done on the cross. Yes, it is Jesus who has paid the price and has exchanged the sin that was yours with the righteousness that was his. This is all because 
Jesus went to Jerusalem and greatly suffered for your sake and was killed for your sins and after three days was raised so that you might have eternal life. Amen. The hymn of the day is on the handout that you should have received today. If you don't have one, just raise your hand and you'll get one. But it is, will you come and follow me? I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have made us feast on your word to the delight of our hearts. Keep us from the worldly company of revelers who despise your word and inspire the pastor of our, your church <coughs> to brazenly proclaim what is precious, the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home and between neighbors. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patient constant. Let us command ourselves in everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Great physician, heal and restore. Especially this day, we continue to remember Keaton Harvey, Kelly Lavalier, Carol Tomerason, Jimmy Vollen, Terry Snow, Dorothy Siddig, Donna Lee Boyd, Betty Jean Benjamin, Rhoda Wold, Ella Riswold, Paul Ramsdahl, Jay Boat, 
Dennis Erswold, Laurel Mater, Tracy Van Dam, Deb Bender, Keith Fawcett, Carla Zoller, Glenn Van Eck, Jan Davis, Myrna Nelson, Kim, who is a friend of our community, and also others whose names we now raise silently from our hearts. We pray that you would give them holy care and strength to bear their crosses, that they may endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, lead us to repentance and faith, that we might not think more highly of ourselves than is right, but that we would set our hearts and minds on the things of God. Prepare us to receive the blessed gifts of our Lord's table, by which you preserve us holy and blameless in Christ until he comes again. Lord, in your mercy. And now all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share God's peace with one another. <clears throat> As we finish sharing God's peace with one another, we will receive your offerings at this time. Uh, noisy can offerings for the month of September at, here at East Nears will go to the Foster Network. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing the offering hymn. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, Unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence, Lord, and give us a foretaste of peace to come. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, with them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. 
for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> today we will be serving communion at the rail today. You follow the direction of the ushers to come forward. And please sing along with the hymns during the distribution. Come for all is ready. Ranger can come up.
Please stand as you are able as we sing the post-communion canticle. Thankful hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what God has done. Let all who see the Lord rejoice and bear Christ's holy name. In us with your promises, O God, us forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, and that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. And I'll receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen, Amen, Amen. We join in singing our sending hymn, Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cold that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us. Go in peace and serve your neighbor.
experiences.
such a little model. Yeah. Yeah. these lights off. 